Chernobyl, a million casualties. Next on Enviro Close Up. Welcome to Enviro Close Up. I am Carl Grossman. This coming April 26th marks the 25th anniversary of the Chernobyl nuclear plant disaster. Meanwhile, the nuclear industry worldwide is pushing for a revival of nuclear power, and this very important book has been published. Chernobyl, this very important book has been published. Chernobyl, Consequences of the Catastrophe for people and the environment, and it concludes based on now available medical data that between 1986, the year of the accident, and 2004, 985,000 people died as a result of the disaster, and more have been dying since. With us is Dr. Janet Sherman. She's the contributing editor of this book, which was authored by a noted Russian biologist, Dr. Alexei Yablakov, Vasily Nestorenko, and Alexei Nestorenko. They're both from Belarus. Welcome, Janet. How did these people die? I mean, we're talking a million people dead from this nuclear plant accident. How? They died of multiple different kinds of diseases, from cancer to heart disease, brain damage, uh, thyroid cancer, but many, many children died in utero, in other words, before they were born, or died of birth defects after they were born. How did these scientists determine 985,000 deaths as a result of Chernobyl? Based on medical data that were available to the scientists. Now, what we've heard, frankly, since the accident, from the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is the, uh, the global group which is supposed to, to regulate and promote nuclear power. Uh, the casualties of Chernobyl, well, currently the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, on its website says maybe in all be 4,000 people dead. Now that's quite different from 985,000. Why this, this discrepancy? Well, they released a report uh, called the Chernobyl Forum, and they only included about 350 articles uh, available in the English language. But Dr. Uh, Yablokov and uh, the two Nestorenkos looked at uh, well over 5,000 articles, and uh, abs the people who were actually we hate to use the term, but boots on the ground. People who were there and saw what was going on. Uh, we're talking about uh, medical doctors, scientists, veterinarians, uh, epidemiologists who saw what was happening when people in their communities were getting sick and dying. There's another international agency, the World Health Organization, WHO. And indeed, the book charges that the truth has not come out on Chernobyl from the WHO. I mean, forget about the IAEA, but from the WHO because of a, an agreement between these two agencies. Can you elaborate on that agreement? They formed an agreement in 1959 that has not been changed, where one will not release a, a, a report without the agreement of the other. Now, this is like having Dracula guard the blood bank because the WHO, who is charged with World Health Organization, is beholden to the IAEA before they can release a report. And what the IAEA, I mentioned before, it's, it's there to regulate nuclear technology around the world, but it was also set up to promote it. Promote it. Uh, and it evidently does not want anything from WHO, which would... Uh, indicate that nuclear power is not good for, for one's health. That's right. And that this needs to be ended. This agreement needs to be stopped. Let, let me go right to you. Now, you've devoted your life to the impacts of poisons. I mean, that, that's been your specialty. 
Mm -hmm. You're a toxicologist. Here, you're, you're editing this book. You're, you're going through all this scientific data. This has to be a million dead, the Chernobyl accident, the biggest technological disaster in the, frankly, the history of the world. It's true. How did you feel as you, you, you looked at the data and you put this book together? Well, I realized it was far worse than I thought it was. And um, that not only were um, people dying of cancer and heart disease, but every single organ in the body, whether it was immunological or lungs or cataracts or skin, everything was adversely affected. But not only people, every single system that was studied and not all were, but every system that was studied, whether it was humans or fish or trees or birds, bacteria, viruses, wolves, uh, cows, every system was changed. Every single system without exception. And this is reflected in, in this the book. It's not just human effects. Many of the birds and animals had similar adverse effects as humans. Now, most people aren't familiar with, I mean, we all know, I think, at this point that radioactivity and cancer go together. But like heart problems, heart disease, how, how does that connect? Well, the most, one of the most fascinating things that I learned in the, when I was uh, rewriting the text of the book and going through all the data was one of the scientists, Bandashevsky, had done a study and sh that showed that the cesium-137 levels in children were the same as he had found in test animals and were causing heart damage. He reported this, and for his work, he was put in prison. And he was put in prison? He was put in prison, yes. And he analyzed, uh, this, uh, these are animals that were... Well, he did original study on animals, and then he was a pathologist, and he was studying the results in children, and he found the same changes in the hearts of children who had died as he'd seen in the animals. And when he reported it, he, his thanks was he got arrested and put in prison. The radioactivity from Chernobyl, Russia, Belarus, the Ukraine, these were three places where, I mean, a lot of the radiation was deposited. But according to this book, again, based on data, I mean, those poisons came down all over the world. Yes, they did. And the greatest concentrations came down in Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia. But the greatest amount, more than 50%, spread around the entire northern hemisphere, particularly uh, went north into um, Scandinavia and um, eastward into Asia. As far as China. Oh, yes. The book concludes, indeed, that the deaths as a result of Chernobyl occurred not just in Belarus, Russia, and the Ukraine, but, but all over. Oh, around the entire uh, the world, yes, of course. How long will this continue? I mean, some of the poisons that were discharged, they're going to be around for millennia. Oh, yes. I mean, just the two main ones, cesium-137 and strontium-90, have half-lives about 30 years. So they'll be around for three centuries at least, but many of the isotopes will be around for millennia. You're right. The book, however, stresses that the, the worst damage occurred in those early months, particularly those early weeks when the fire that, I mean, there was this huge fire that wasn't, I mean, they weren't able to put it out, was blazing. Well, yes, but still, the, right now, the, the reactor is leaking into the water supply. The structure that is around the reactor right now is not sound. And if there's so much as a mild earthquake, there's a chance of it collapsing. So this reactor is by no means 